Another progressive swipe at all religion. I'm Brian Lilly with Rebel.media. An interesting story in the Globe and Mail this week that looked at the issue of foreign funding of Islamic schools in Canada, specifically from Saudi Arabia. Now, this is interesting because Saudi Arabia is known to use its great financial wealth to export their specific brand of Islam, Wahhabism. So it's an interesting story in the Globe and Mail, but unfortunately, by the end of the story, they're using it to attack the influence of all religions. Let's give you some background first. WikiLeaks, the group that loves to expose governments around the world, got a batch of diplomatic cables between Saudi Arabia and their various outposts around the world. This includes cables between the government in Riyadh and their embassy in Ottawa. Two Islamic schools are mentioned in Canada as being potential recipients of money. Olive Grove Islamic School in Mississauga getting a grant of about $134,000. The Ottawa Islamic School getting a grant of $211,000. This raises the issue of are these schools teaching a particular form of Islam at the behest of the Saudi government? Are they bringing Wahhabism into Canada due to these grants? Uh, Both schools say no, that's not the case. They got lots of money from lots of different places and the grants were no strains attached. I still have my concerns, but unless there's evidence, we have to take the schools at their word. Uh, The Globe goes on to talk to security experts about why this is an issue and should be examined. But then at the end, listen to how they turn. Colin Fries, the author of the article, says, And some observers say Canadian government officials should pay more attention to a proliferation of private religious schools of all stripes, and not because of the fears of influence. And then they quote from a woman named Lois Sweet, When you end up with children going to schools on the basis of their parents' religious beliefs, you end up with a system of ghettoization, said Lois Sweet, a Canadian journalist who wrote a 1997 book called God in the Classroom. In the interview, she added that, I think of it as religious apartheid. Religious apartheid. So deciding that you want to send your kids to a school that imparts your values is religious apartheid. Going to a school that imparts Benjamin Levin's values on sex education, well, that's just to be expected, and if you don't like it, you're probably just a hater anyway. Look, we've long had religious schools, schools including the great universities of the world were set up by religious institutions. Some of them are still run by those religious institutions. What you're seeing here is an ongoing attempt by the progressive left to push religion out of the public square. And in this case, they're using a story about potential influence of Wahhabism, a radical idea, a radical branch of Islam, and security concerns because Wahhabism does export terror And we know the Saudis fund those groups, and now they're funding Canadian schools. So this is a legitimate issue, a legitimate concern. They're using it to take a swipe at all religions. They're not done yet. The article continues, Ms. Sweet said she interviewed many Muslim, Sikh, Hindu, and conservative Christian parents in Canada who had removed their children from the public system. But she added that many had said they would reconsider if public schools made more concessions to faith practices. Quote, we shouldn't have religious schools at all, she said. We should have a public system that accommodates. I'm not against accommodation, but who's Miss Sweet? Who's the Globe and Mail to say that we shouldn't have religious schools at all? I'm not even in favor of Catholic schools in Ontario getting the public money that they do, and I send my kids to a Catholic school. I'm all in favor of private education of all sorts. Whether it's religious schools or secular schools, parents should have the choice. Parents are the first educators. But what we see in this Globe and Mail article is another attempt by progressives to one, push the public square or push faith out of the public square, and two, say that parents shouldn't have choices, that parents should be subservient to the state. The state will decide, and parents will just have to put up with it. That's not a world that I want to live in. But you need to be aware of this, you need to pay attention of it so that as you read these articles, you're not just drawn in by the idea that, yeah, let's do this so that we can keep the Wahhabists out. No, there are other ways to do it. This is a progressive power play. It's just a a small hint at it, but it won't be the last time you see this sort of thing in the mainstream media.